Today we have a full review of Index Astartes and Blood Angels. Death Company are two wounds now, but a lot of options have been killed. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focus 40k channel, where today we're looking at Index Astartes Blood Angels, a kind of interim supplement codex that's supposed to tide us over until the actual book is released. An enormous amount of stuff has changed in this book, almost every unit has got a nice rewrite, Black Rage has been tweaked a little bit, but there are quite a lot of sections in the book that are conspicuous by their absence. In this video we'll talk about every single rule in the book, including going through every Blood Angels datasheet, at least in brief. For the complete picture though, we will have to wait till the supplement itself is released, where we might see further rules changes, and hopefully quite a lot of the flavour should return. So what is actually in Index Society's Blood Angels then? First of all, they state that it's basically a complete replacement for Codex Blood Angels and the Blood of Baal Psychic Awakening book. In terms of the current rules for Blood Angels, those two are now gone, and you use these rules as a supplement to the new Codex Space Marines instead. This PDF document isn't complete though really. Basically any of the Warlord trade options, relics, stratagems and psychic powers from the core Codex Blood Angels have not been reprinted here, they're just completely missing. It is annoying to lose access to these in the short term. A lot of them really are key to making certain units work, but I'm sure that they will return in time when the book is actually released in full. For this temporary absence of the cool flavorful rules of Blood Angels, I would bear in mind that we've actually gained quite a lot in terms of access to all of the generic Space Marine kit. There were a lot of stratagems in core codex Space Marines that Blood Angels didn't have access to, the same with Warlord traits, relics, the Librarius discipline, and even some data sheets. Some things that the Sons of Sanguinius will very much like to get their hands on are the Teeth of Terror, that Relic Chainsword. We can now have characters that are strength 5 and plus 3 attacks with that, that's going to be very nice. We've gained access to Assault Centurions now, which actually could still be kind of interesting, coming out of Strategic Reserve with a bunch of Flamers and Hurricane Bolters, then having plus 1 to charge from the Blood Angels chapter tactic, and the Warlord trait Imperium Sword for plus 1 strength and plus 1 attack and re-rolling charges, which is exactly the sort of thing that fighty Blood Angels characters are going to like. It's certainly not bad to have access to the Librarius Discipline as well, with the 5 plus invulnerable save bubble that now is in it. Certainly a big upgrade on the Shield of Sanguinius. I would see the various other options that aren't in the book at the moment as just temporarily missing rather than lost for good, though it is annoying not to be able to use certain relics and warlord traits for the time being. Moving on from that discussion, we've got successor chapter rules. You can now have custom successor chapters using the Blood Angels, Stratagems, Rules and Relics and you could add different bonuses to them, such as Master Artisans and Stealthy, should you want to. Though I will say that having plus one to wound on the charge is very very good for an assault orientated army. Some army wise rules have been reprinted here, Savage Echoes is unchanged, it's the same extra attacks in the Assault Doctrine that we know and love. Black Rage has seen a few tweaks though, as we'll come on to in a second. The other rules as we said are quite sparse, there are only four stratagems present that were taken from the Blood of Bar, and a couple of have seen some tweaks. There's all the relics from Blood of Baal which are largely unchanged, two Flesh Terrors relics and two Stratagems, and I've said for the time being the Warlord traits were all set as Speed of the Primarch from the Codex, and Merciless Butcher for Gabriel Seth. Those aren't found here, but are printed under the Blood Angels and Flesh Terrors sections in the Core Codex Space Marines. For me, neither of those are particularly impressive for the special characters. Definitely going to be waiting to have things like Artisan of War back. The biggest change to the updates are new datasheets being issued, and many of the units receiving extensive reworks. And I'd say this is the coolest part of the index, and it's going to be interesting going over the various combos and putting them together. Points costs have been tweaked a bit, the general trend seems to be small increases in points due to new and more powerful rules, though a few things have gone down where appropriate. Let's look at some datasheets now, and I thought we'd start with the Elite section to look at the Sanguinary Guard and Death Company. Sanguinary Guard, I'd say, are big winners of this update. If we are assuming that those Blood Angels jump back stratagems are going to come back, at the moment they can't do their 3d6 inch charge for example. However, I thought they were decently playable before, and now they've come down in points to 30 points from 34. So a really big drop there. They remained 2 wounds, some people thought they might be going to 3, but they did gain an additional attack, so every single guy is now base 3 attacks now. So that's a mighty 4 with Shock Assault, and 5 if you're making use of Savage Echoes. The Power Fist is a less good option for them now, as it costs a few plus 5 points, so for the most part I'd be sticking with the Onkarmian Sword, which has gained plus 2 strength, and is now flat damage 2. Their Death Mask rule has been rewritten, they're now minus 1 to hit in melee, which is a very nice little durability boost for them, and they also gain plus 1 to hit when they're less than 6 inches away from your Warlord. Both they and Death Company are core units, so they can benefit from rerolls from your characters. 
Oh, and before I forget, their bolt guns were also buffed their 18 inch range now. Overall, I'm really quite a big fan of the changes. I think you really can't go too far wrong with a small squad of fire sanguinary guard, armed with the oncarmin swords. If they get red thirst and shock assault, then they'll kill around about 9 intercessors on the charge, or deal out around about 11 wounds to a vehicle with no imbul save. Reasonably tough to return fire as well with a 2 plus save and 2 wounds, and their shooting's been buffed to boost. For me, a very solid jump assault unit. Next we have the Sanguinary Ancient, who's gone up quite a lot to 125 from 75, and his rules have been fairly changed. His chapter banner lost the reroll ones. It now gives you plus one to hit in the command phase on one unit. It means he's not really as good with deep striking now, because he won't be able to deal out that buff on the turn that he comes in. He also gained minus one to hit in melee from death masks, gets plus one to hit uh, if he's near your warlord, and he also actually gets the standard Astartes banner ability, where models might be able to shoot or fight when he, they die when they're near him. I'm afraid for me he's just a bit expensive at the moment. Maybe he could be worth consideration again if we get that banner of 5 plus feel no pain back, but at the moment we don't have it because that was in Codex Blood Angels. Moving on to our second pack of iconic blood hungry assault troops. We have the Death Company, who are now 22 points without jump packs, or 25 points with. Certainly a small points increase, but well worth it in my opinion for gaining that extra wound. Two wound Death Company with a feel no pain save are going to be very durable indeed. Far, far more than their previous incarnation, and might be actually on a fairly similar level durability-wise to Sanguinary Guard now, just because they cost less and because of that feel no pain. Their melees also gained a buff in its own way too. They have Astartes Chainswords for AP-1, plus the power weapon changes somewhat help them. For example, power swords look a bit more usable at strength 5, though I imagine a lot of people will still just be using power fists or thunder hammers. On the downside for these blood mad killers though, Black Rage has been changed a little bit more to reflect that. The unit now can't do actions, not that you'd generally be wanting to do them anyway, you really need to be getting stuck in with Death Company. And also, Death Company cannot fall back now. That latter one is a bit of a limitation to be honest, it does mean that your opponent might be able to do gamey things by locking them up and preventing enemy units from shooting them. For that reason, I'd usually make sure that I have some anti-tank and anti-infantry in the squad, just to make sure that if your opponent is getting locked up with them, then it's going to take some significant damage. Otherwise, it's the same old excellent plus one to attack and feel no pain as we've had before. Unfortunately, their war gear has got a bit restricted. You can either have to choose the chainsaw or the bolter now, you can't just take both. So if you are wanting those Astartes chainsaws, as I think you typically will be, the squad will lose a little bit of range damage output. The max squad size is down to 10 from 15, unfortunately, which is a little bit annoying to lose the option, but to be honest, for me, Death Company were better used in squads less than 10 anyway. Usually that many bodies is going to make a big enough impact to utterly destroy whatever they're charging anyway. I don't think I'd rather take multiple squads of 5 to 10 rather than really push it out. In general though, the change is going to equate to them being a little bit less hitty point for point, but massively more durable with those extra wounds. We also have Death Company Intercessors, which have seen a very helpful change indeed. You can now take the Assault Intercessors as Death Company too. They'll cost you 24 points for that built-in feel no pain, Astartes Chainsword and Heavy Bolt Pistol and he can still take those thunder hammers or power fists in the squad. The Death Company Intercessors also now have 3 attacks each, so if you were in the Assault Doctrine with these guys, they're going to get a massive 7 attacks each on the charge for a 24 point guy. That's 3 base, 1 for Black Rage, 1 for Shock Assault, 1 for the Astartes Chainsword, and 1 for Savage Echoes. An absolutely ludicrous amount of damage potential there, just the sort of thing that you're going to want piling out of an Impulsor or something. I'd argue that they're a pretty reasonable upgrade on Intercessors, those 4 or 5 extra points really do pay dividends. Next we come to the Elite Dreadnoughts and the Bar Predator. First, the Furioso has changed quite a lot, it's gone up to 120 points, and most importantly it's gained Duty Eternal, so it always has minus 1 damage, which is just a great survivability boost. There are a few trade-offs for this though, it now only moves 6 inches, not 8. The Frag Cannon's been changed quite a lot, it's 18 inches, Heavy 2d3, Strength 7, AP-2, Damage 2 and Blast which to be honest I think is a fairly respectable general purpose damage profile. It gets plus one attack if it's armed with two close combat weapons, and the Magna Grapple for an extra five points has been changed quite a lot as well. When a vehicle tries to fall back, if you can roll 2d6 higher than its strength, then the vehicle won't be able to fall back. If you swap this out, then you do lose the smokescreen keyword, which could be handy for the minus one to hit. Sadly for both this guy and the Death Company Dreadnought, unlike standard chapter Dreadnoughts, they have not got the core keyword. A bit annoying for not being able to receive re-rolls and things, though I would say that they have a fairly respectable damage output all by themselves. The Death Company Dreadnought's actually down a little bit in points, it's 125, and does receive the same restrictions as the Black Rage, 
It does gain that 6 plus feel no pain and extra attack on the charge, but of course you can't fall back now. Before we get into characters, we have the Bar Predator. Finally, both variants of this have received a bit of a points drop. The Flamestorm version is now only 120 points, and the Flamestorm Cannon is now a nice 18 inch range. Combined with that heavy flamer buff to be flaming away at 12 inches, it might see a little bit more play. The Assault Cannon version is now 130 points, down from 140. And if it advances, that overcharged engines now gives it plus 6 inches to its move. I guess could be handy for some late game objective grabbing, but seeing as you can't advance and shoot, you don't really want to use this all that much. Overall, I can't help but think it's still a little bit overcosted for what it does, but it is significantly improved on the previous incarnation. Now we'll quickly run through the Blood Angels' many HQ choices, the vast majority of which have seen multiple rules change. They really have gone quite a long way to reimagining these guys. First up, we have Dante, who's 175 points now from 170. His rerolls have received a bit of a nerf in line with the new Chapter Master ability. He now selects one unit to reroll four hits in the command phase, and just gives normal captain style rerolls to the other core units within six. So not so amazing with rerolls, particularly as he can't use that if he's deep striking this turn, as he won't be around in the command phase. So it might be worth considering starting him on the board a bit more. Otherwise, though, he's getting a fair few small buffs. The Axe Mortalis is now Strength plus 3, so Strength 7, which is an upgrade. He gets a free Epic Deed stratagem, which the only one that he can use is only in Death Does Duty End. So basically when Dante gets killed, you'll get to fight with him in the fight phase for free, or make a free shooting attack. He's always minus 1 to hit at both range and melee, so he's significantly more durable than before. And if he's your Warlord, you also get an additional command point. There's really quite a lot of fun stuff here though he might be just a little bit less fighty, as he won't be re-rolling his own hits anymore. In more competitive lists, I think he might be a few too many points for me still. The other chapter master we have is Gabriel Seth, who's gone up to 160 from 140. Again, he's received the same chapter master nerf as Dante. He's gained plus one attack with the exact same combat weapon, Blood Reaver, as before. And his special rules have been reworked a bit. Now core units within six inches of him add plus one to their damage characteristic on wound roll of sixes. That'd actually be pretty handy for flesh terrors fighting vehicles and things, where they'd be wounding on fives or sixes anyway. And now he's sort of become a corn berserker, because he automatically fights again at the end of each fight phase. Seth is just going to deal a ridiculous amount of damage to pretty much anything he touches, providing it doesn't kill him in return. It's around about 13 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle when he's on the charge. The Sanguinor has received a really fun new rule as well, He's 150 points from 140, his Oncarming Greatsword is now damage 2 from D3, and 6s to wound now cause a mortal wound as well. I'm afraid his plus 1 attacks aura has been heavily nerfed though, he is no longer anywhere near as much of a support character. You only get the plus 1 attack on core or character units that are not already receiving the benefit of Shock Assault. That means it's only ever going to come into a play in protracted combats, which still honestly isn't bad, but the majority of the time you're really going to be looking to maximise that first turn strike with the Blood Angel's Red Thirst. He's minus one to hit as well, in melee only, and he's gained a six inch heroic intervention move. Probably the most exciting thing about his change though, is that he can now do a fun little reserve manoeuvre, which happens if an opponent charges a Blood Angel's unit. His Miraculous Saviour special rule is a special way of setting him up from reserve, and you can use it when your opponent charges a Blood Angel's unit. You just simply set up the Sanguinor within engagement range of that unit, and it counts as him having made a heroic intervention into them. I would bear in mind that this would put him at risk of being attacked first by the charging unit, so it's probably best used against things with low AP that might struggle to get through his 2 plus armor save. Could be really fun though, and could potentially be very scary for an enemy army, knowing that whenever they charge a unit, this guy might just pop up directly into the midst of the fray. Next up we have Brother Corbulo, who's received a bunch of apothecary buffs, though he is up at 115 points now. He doesn't have his ability to re-roll a single dice anymore, and the Red Grail has swapped his plus one strength ability for nearby core Blood Angels units always being in the Assault Doctrine. This one's really quite fun, having extra AP on Blood Angels attacks is very nice. You could get some AP minus two Astartes Chainsaws on the go perhaps. Probably the most important change though is that he's gained all those new apothecary rules, giving units within 3 inches a 6 plus feel no pain aura, and as he's a chief apothecary, he can also heal twice with that Narthesium. As he's an apothecary as well, you will be able to use combat restoratives on a unit, so he's just really going to keep your units alive, as well as making them more dangerous. He honestly seems like a really solid little buffing character, particularly if leading Blood Angels troops coming out of drop pods, or maybe just foot-slogging across the board. The Sanguinary Priest has seen similar changes, 
similar to Corby, although he now puts you in the Assault Doctrine whenever you make attacks now, rather than giving you plus one strength. And he's gained those excellent Apothecary rules for six plus feel no pain, healing, and potentially using combat restoratives. Basically, you get to weigh him up against the standard Apothecary as to whether or not you want that Assault Doctrine benefit as well. It could be very worth it when escorting Blood Angel's melee troops. Next we come to Mephiston and the Librarian Dreadnought, both of whom are very sad at the loss of the Sanguinary Discipline and are really looking forward to it coming back. Honestly, Wings of Sanguinius for those extra long moves was a really big bonus to fielding these guys, and without it they just feel a little bit lacklustre at the moment. Mephiston has dropped in points significantly though, to 155, and at the moment he'll be using Librarius Discipline, probably for things like Might of Heroes for plus 1 strength and attacks, which isn't bad and potentially Psychic Fortress for that aura of 5 plus invul saves. Again, honestly, that could be a decent bonus for, say, some Foot Slogging Death Company or Assault Intercessors or something, and it could be an interesting combo for dealing defensive buffs, and then using Might of Heroes to buff himself up and go and wreck something when the enemy get close. Hopefully he'll get to choose between the Librarius and the Sanguinary once we do have the actual book. The Librarian Dreadnought is pretty much in a similar situation, He's 150 points now, and arguably his close combat's got slightly better, as he's now 4 attacks now rather than 3. The Force Hellbard now only makes 1 attack, and that's damage D3 plus 3, and it's only at strength 8, so he will be fighting with that Furioso Fist for the rest of his attacks. Most importantly though, he gained Duty Eternal, which is really good, so he is now far tankier than he was before without having to pay command points, but without Wings of Sanguinius to zoom him forward, he has lost quite a lot of his utility. I see him and Mephiston at the moment as anvil units to use Psychic Fortress on and advance up the board, rather than being lone threats to zoom off on their own. To round up our special characters, we have Astarath and Lamartes and Tycho. Astarath has received a pretty unfortunate points increase, I'm afraid. He's now 150, though he can now use Massive Doom every turn, as it's now a listening. It always will give you plus one to hit in close combat, even if he rolls a one, but if he does roll a one, then one model in the squad that he's using it on will get executed. Now you can't command reroll that, it's really quite annoying. The Executioner's Axe has got a bit of a buff, it's gone to flat damage 3, and he can do 2 listeners a turn, as per being a Master of Sanctity. For me though, now you can't reroll Chaplain listeners, and the fact that he's quite so much more expensive, I don't think that he'll be seeing quite as much play. The Martis is interesting, though he's a bit more niche, as he can only buff Death Company now. He can do 2 listeners a turn, but they only affect nearby Death Company models, nothing else. Death Company can still re-roll charges when they're within 6 inches of him, but he now no longer gives the innate 4 re-rolls to hit for Death Company, you'd have to use his standard litany for that. It is pretty much just a nerf for him, he's not quite as key as he was before, though it's still by no means a bad character to lead Death Company into battle. The re-roll charges alone is very, very valuable. Finally, we have Tycho and Tycho the Lost. Standard Tycho is now 95 points, and Death Company Tycho is now 100. Death Company Tycho now can give rerolls to his Death Company, and he can do so even when they're 9 inches away, so a good big aura there. His war gear gains slight buffs, Dead Man's Hand is now strength user AP-3, damage 1, and Blood Song is a little bit stronger at close range, being D6 plus 2 damage. His Orc Fighting Rule has got a bit of a rework, he's plus 1 strength and plus 1 damage against them now, which is nice, but honestly I'm still not sure I'd really want to take him compared with the standard Captain. It's just in the slightly awkward position of not being all that dangerous, not that cheap, and not that fast. Finally, to round out the review, I just thought we'd mention the rules updates briefly. We touched on Black Rage earlier, but no actions and no falling back. It's a slightly unfortunate nerf to Death Company, though I have to admit it does absolutely fit the law. I do think it means that you're going to want Death Company to be absolutely fighty as hell. You don't really want just an entire squad armed with chainsaws to be charged down by a really tough vehicle and for them not to do very much for the next turn or two. I personally hope that the stratagem on Wings of Fire returns to the book as this could be a way to get them out of combat without actually falling back and it could be a really useful one to use in clutch situations where they can jump out and maybe charge something else. Aside from the sanguinary discipline, the other big thing that we're really going to miss are the stratagem section. Some core Blood Angels options have been lost, such as that excellent 3d6 charge out of Deep Strike, Full on Fury to jump Death Company forward, On Wings of Fire to redeploy units, and Red Rampage for plus d3 attacks on the charge for characters. There's plenty of others that will be missed, but those are some of my favourites. Again, I'm sure that many of these will return in one form or another, but it's pretty annoying in the meantime, and really limits some of the clever tricks for Death Company and Sanguinary Guard. The ones that remain, one of the best is 1 command point refusal to die, which gives you a 5 plus fail no pain type save on a death company unit for a phase, and this one's actually gained an absolute ton of value due to death company having 2 wounds now. 
You could really make one death company unit that's just made a charge and killed something a really annoying threat to remove. On a by bar, it's just the one to give a successor chapter a relic from the Psychic Awakening book that's meant for Blood Angels, so I can't say it's the most exciting. Explosive Judgment remains, this is the one for Sanguinary Guard and their Angelus Bolt Guns to re-roll wound rolls and ignore cover. Now they're 18 inch range, maybe that might see a little bit more play, though it's not absolutely massive. And finally, the near auto includes Drastium of Unbridled Ardor has received a hefty points increase. It will now cost you 3 command points rather than 1. Unbridled Ardor is the one that gives you a 6 inch heroic intervention for any Blood Angels unit, so I don't think it will be seeing quite as much play. Even at this increased cost though, there will still be a lot of times that I think it will be worth it. If the opponent misplays and say leaves a unit right next to your death company or sanguinary guard, then having 3 command points for your big fighter units to just jump in and delete something could easily be worth the cost. And it can also have implications for taking objectives and things, say if you need to get a troops unit on an objective that the opponent's already on. Still though, it's going to have to be weighed up against other options just that bit more. Finally, talking relics, we have the ones copy pasted from Blood of Bar, and there are some good ones in here. The Mastercrafted Weapon, the Icon of the Angel, and the Quake Bolts are just some, but it will be annoying to have the temporary absence of the Angel's Wing, Veritas Vitae, and the standard that gives us 5 plus feel no pain. I hope that those manage to survive at least somewhat intact into the new codex. So overall, I can't say that this update has been the kindest to Blood Angels, a fair few nerfs going around here, and temporary loss of access to quite a lot of options. I am hopeful for the future though, quite a lot of the characters seem a lot more interesting than before. Both Sanguinary Guard and Death Company really have me itching to play them, and Duty Eternal on the Dreadnoughts is going to be nice. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts down in the comments below, and I'll certainly be eagerly looking forward to the supplement Blood Angels, which I will hopefully get round to reviewing when it's released. If you've enjoyed the video then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where hopefully I will be looking to go over the other indexes when I have chance, as well as plenty more Blood Angels and Space Marines content on the channel. Finally, if you'd like to help support All Specs Tactics, and keep all these regular videos coming, I'd just like to mention that I do have a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description. Channel Patreons get to see one video per week early, there's regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and you also get automatically entered into the prize giveaway each month, with a chance to win some big model kits. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the video description, and a massive thank you to you guys who are already supporting. In any case, a big thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.